Hello everyone and welcome to this Getting Started with Inline Manual webinar. My name is Marek Sotek and I am the founder of Inline Manual and I'm very happy to have you here. In this webinar we will cover four essential parts of Inline Manual. The first would be the player which will allow you to play the tutorials. Second, the authoring tool and how you can create tutorials. Third, how you can manage, deploy and collaborate with others. And fourth, how you can implement the player for your customers. Let's get started with the player. On this demo side, we have the widget implemented here at the bottom right corner. Now this is what the end user sees. So once the end user clicks on this widget, they will see the list of the tutorials they can do. So let me click on this one. You can see that the end user is being navigated through the workflows via these tooltips. So let me click on the next step after reading the description, what should I be doing? So let's click on next. And here I'm instructed to click the widget. So I'm going to click on the widget again. And here we can see that it moved to another step after clicking the widget. So it also allows the user learn by doing. So they are actually clicking or interacting with the application like if they were doing their regular work. So here I'm instructing to click next button. Click next. Here's another example of a link. It's a, just a basic HTML link. So once I click on that, it's pointing to another page. So you can see I have been navigated to another page. This means that you can create tutorials within multiple pages on one site. So it's not just for one page. Here I'm instru instructed to fill in my username in the input field and continue next. This is another feature of the player which allows you to highlight specific elements so the user actually fo focuses on this specific part. You can click next again. Now you can see that it's really easy for the end user to actually fill in the forms, navigate around the site, and you have really full control of what the user should be doing. Now all these tooltips and the widget itself you can style with a simple CSS. The, let me just finish the tour. The widget itself is as well contextual, which means that if any of these topics had a, a context of this path, let's say the user login, it would be highlighted on top. And that means that the end user, once they are on the specific page and they click the widget, they will see or they will get the right help at the right time. Now let's move on the other part. Let's cover the authoring part. The authoring happens through the authoring tool that is a Chrome extension. So it requires you to actually install the Chrome browser. Now, once you install it, you will see a little icon here, which is the inline menu logo. Once I click on that, you can see that the inline menu authoring tool appears. So here is the list of the tutorials. We call these topics because it's kind of like a broader term. Now these tutorials I have access to. So let me find the one that I have created. If you want to create a new completely one, you can click here on the create topic. Once you click on that, you will be redirected to the inlinemanual.com portal where you can fill in the details. And then it will appear here in the authoring tool. So let me find my test topic, which appeared here. So once I click on that, you can see that it's blank. So right now I can create a new step. So I can either click this button or I can click this plus symbol. So let's click here, create one now. So I just created a new step. Now I can fill in the step title, which appears, which is by default hidden, which and you can enable it here by disabling and enabling this option. So let's disable it. And here is the step content text. So I can, let's say, fill in, click into this form. I can preview it by clicking on this eye icon. I can as well disable the preview if I want to by the icon next to it. You can fill, uh, you can insert an image tag as well, but the images has to be stored on your local storage. 
if I want to position the actual tooltip, I have to click on this assign position. So once I click on that, you can see that the authoring tool disappeared or is actually on the side here. And now I'm able to actually navigate through this website structure and select which field I want to select. So let's click this input field. And you can see that the tooltip automatically appeared on top of it. Now here we can change the position. So let's say I can change it to bottom. I can change it to left if I like to. Whatever is most convenient for the specific use. You can see that there is a path as well. So you can you know, define the path. Or you can, if you are more tech savvy, you can enter the selector uh, if you like to. If you know what to enter in there. Now you can, you can assign specific events like click event, which means if it's, let's say, this would be useful for buttons or links. So it actually follows the user when they click on the specific element. So you can just click that. Or you can as well apply the highlight effect here. Then you can hide specific controls within the step, within the, this tooltip. So let's say if you want the user really just to click on the a uh, link, for example, you can hide the whole controls. So only the text appears and is waiting for the user to click on a specific element. You can hide the previous next or disable these other buttons. Within advanced, we have a condition which needs to be enabled if you want to um, make use of Ajax, for example. The step delay is a little bit advanced again for, uh, let's say, if it's not working properly for the Ajax specific use cases. Now, when, once you are done with this step, you can add another step. So, you know, you can add as many steps as you like. And then you can as well duplicate the steps. You can move them up and down through these icons. And you can as well remove the step. Once you are done with your changes, you can describe your changes or leave it empty. And you can just click save your changes here. So if I save my changes, it goes to the inlinemanual.com portal. So now is the right time to describe what the inlinemanual.com portal does. So once you log in to the inline manual portal, log in here. The inline manual portal is a central repository for all of these tutorials that you create and manage. Here, all the collaboration is happening. So here, for example, I can see the list of activities, what is happening here. I can see my colleagues working on tutorials and so on. So here I can see the list of topics. So let me click on that. And here is the list of all the topics, all the tutorials that I have created or I have a read, write or admin access to. So for example, I can click on this at a user tutorial. Within the detail of tutorial, you can see that there is an activity log and you can see that who is working on what or who did any changes. Here we have revisions and the revision itself are whenever you save actually within the authoring tool, whenever you click the button to save the changes, it creates a new revision. So we have here a simple version control system. On top of the revisions, you can create releases out of them, which means that you can, for example, imagine it as a, having a dev environment and production, uh, production environment. And for the dev environment, you still want to extend existing tutorials while you are creating or extending the features itself. But on the production server, you want to keep it untouched. So here we can create a release, let's say when you are ready, with the, with the tutorial itself, you can create re release out of this revision and assign it to the actual production side. So that would be, let's say, version 1.0. And this side will always fetch the ver version 1.0, which means that you can still continue developing the features on the development side and continue editing the tutorial, but the production will be always untouched or unaffected by these changes. Now we can easily compare the changes between the revisions 
And we have here as well simple issues management. So for example, if your team is collaborating, you can open an issue if you find something some some issue within the documentation itself within the tutorial you can report it here or discuss with the colleagues we have as well permissions based uh, approach so we can add new people to the tutorials and collaborate or you can create an organization which would uh, automatically inherit all the permissions if you set one now we have here a concept of sites which means that you first create a site. So let's say here I have this inlinemail.com site. And here where all the management is happening. So here you are telling the actually the player which tutorials will be available for the end user. So all of these tut associated tutorials for this site will be visible within the widget on the specific page. You can see that there is this version 1.0, so it will always fetch us the version 1.0. If it's had, it would always get the latest version, the latest revision. Here you can filter out your tutorials or the public ones. We have here a concept of public and private tutorials, which allows more collaboration. You can, you can take any of these tutorials and reuse them on any sites you like and if you create a public tutorial everyone else will see it the private tutorials will be seen only by the people that you give permissions now within the site uh, we have these two beta features one is the tests and what the tests are actually doing once you click on here on this button it will go to your site and checks whether all the tutorials are still working, which is quite helpful when you are, let's say, deploying a new version and you want to make sure that it's still working. You don't want to go through each of these tutorials and check them on your own. It can be automated like this. It will tell you whether the tutorials are there or, or are working or if there are any steps missing or the pages are not there and so on. Now, the other feature is HTML docs, which allows you to export the tutorials to HTML, to a static HTML. Now I can show you quickly a small an example of exported tutorial. So here you can see that it's actually a raw HTML uh, which you can style, which you can apply branding to. Now it's not just the steps that you can see here, the, the descriptions of the steps, but you can see that it actually created the screenshots for you of the elements. So these are actually the screenshots. It's not the HTML elements, but these are the screenshots of the applications. So whenever you change your application, you can just hit the button here, export HTML docs, and it goes to your site and creates this exported HTML, creates the screenshots, and you are done with your uh, documentation with your static HTML documentation that you can later export to PDF if you like. So now you are ready to implement inline manual with your application or your site. On the site detail you will see an implement link here at the top right corner. Once you click on that you see a list of options. The first one is a standalone download. So here in the standalone download, you are able to actually fill in the widget title, uh, the foreground color, background color, base path. Base path is used when uh, your application is running in a subfolder. So you need to tell the player the instructions here. And once you click on the download, you will get a zipped file with the player.js, with the JavaScript file, and the style sheets file. Now, the JavaScript file as well includes already the tutorials, so the data are there, which means that whenever if you implement this player, it's not contacting our site when the end users are actually using it. Now, you can implement it quite easily by just uploading these files to your server and then embedding these few lines of code. It does require a jQuery library. Now, the cons of this approach is that whenever you change any tutorials within your site or the site versions and so on, you have to always re-upload these files again back to your server. 
which we, we would recommend to use the custom integration via API if you are more serious or if you are looking to changing this quite often. Now we have documentation on API API.io so you can check it out there and test it there. Um, it's quite simple, you can just fetch all the data, store it on your server and then push it to the player JavaScript file which you can download as well. There are instructions, we have some libraries there for PHP and Ruby right now and you can look on the GitHub to see how it was implemented. Now what our integration usually does is that we allow the documentation team or whoever is actually caring about documentation uh, to have a fetch button which whenever they click it will actually fetch the, all the tutorials for them so they can actually manage the deployment and uh, new versions and so on by themselves without asking the developers. So we have covered all the essential parts of inline manual. We have covered the player, how you can create, so that's the authoring tool, the inlinemanual.com portal where you can manage all the tutorials and the documentation itself, and how you can implement the tutorials and the player itself. So let's repeat the key benefits of inline manual. You can create onboarding and interactive documentation in less than 10 minutes. You can improve user experience by simple tutorials. You can reuse existing content so you can easily take one and put it on the other side. You can copy update tutorials in Teams so you can either copy one tutorial, put it on another side and then extend it. We have a version control system like features, so you can see revisions and history and go back and forth. There's a whole release management, so your documentation team can actually deploy the documentation on their own, no need to ask developer. You can create community around the documentation itself of your product, because you can let them create public tutorials and then they can create it for you. You will get fewer support calls because the widget itself is always there, is contextual, so if you create the right tutorials, the right set of tutorials, the people will actually help themselves first. You can export to HTML, including screenshots. You will be actually able to budget the documentation and you will lower the cost of documentation itself. I hope you have enjoyed this webinar and please get in touch if you have any questions. This webinar will be available on inlinemanual.com slash blog and we will post there a summary of questions that has been posted during this webinar and you can get in touch directly with me at marek at inlinemanual.com or you can follow us on Twitter or Google+. I'm sure you will have a lot of questions when it comes to integrating with your application so please don't hesitate either jump on the forums that we have on the support channel or really get in touch with me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of the day. Bye!